Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to chapter eight. Chapter eight is called Unsurprised. And it is narrated by Chloe Garfinkel. So remember in Chloe Garfinkel's um, IQ, 159. And she was the one in the previous chapters that had all the hypotheses. So she just kind of makes hypotheses all the time about people around her and what's going on. So well, let's see what her take on all of this is. All right. Chapter eight, Chloe Garfinkel, unsurprised. And it starts off with a hypothesis. Hypothesis, Donovan Cur Curtis is smarter than all of us put together. Hmm, that's an interesting guess. Okay, probably not. Make that definitely not. Yet all of our spectacular grades, killer IQs, and gangbuster te test scores couldn't keep us out of summer school. Neither could Oz, Mr. Del Rio, and even Dr. Schultz. And Donovan managed it with a flick of the wrist. The stomach entered the room first. It was enormous. Like someone had stretched a tablecloth over a prize winning watermelon. We waited for the rest of her to come in. It took longer than we thought because she wasn't moving too swiftly. When I finally saw how petite she was, it seemed like a miracle she was moving at all. Her name was Katie Patterson, and she was Donovan's older sister. This was kind of like show and tell on steroids. She was our human growth and development project, our way out of summer school. We needed final approval from the state, of course, but Oz and the school agreed that she counted as hands-on experience, provided we followed her pregnancy for its final six weeks. I'd known the minute Donovan showed up in lab that something important was happening. And here was the proof. He was the Calvary galloping to our rescue. Can you imagine the top students in the state and maybe even the whole country not being allowed to start high school? It would be a huge black eye for the academy and the whole school district. And what did Donovan get out of this? Nothing. He'd already taken human growth and development, so he wouldn't have to go to summer school. And he had a sister that, who didn't exactly look thrilled that he had volunteered her unborn child as our class pet. So he was probably going to pay for it at home. Abigail said Donovan was a self-centered jerk, not gifted at all, who was laughing at us behind our backs. I didn't agree. Maybe he wasn't gifted in the way we were, but he had an uncanny knack for making a difference. Take the robotics program. From a scientific standpoint, Tin Man hadn't changed at all since his arrival. Donovan had contributed a name, a few pictures from the internet, and his joystick skills. Yet somehow he transformed our entire team. We were focused, excited, united. Cold Springs Harbor had better watch out. Hypothesis. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts, especially if one of those parts is Donovan. Welcome to the robotics lab, Katie, Oz greeted the newcomer warmly. We're so grateful for you to be helping us out by allowing us into your life. She glared in her brother's direction and then turned to the teacher. I have only one rule and this one's a deal breaker. When you're seven and a half months pregnant, you go to the bathroom every time the wind blows. So when I have to run, Nobody had better get in my way. Oz seized the teachable moment. What happens is the growing baby expands the uterus and puts pressure on the bladder. Whatever the reason, Katie continued, when I've got to go, everything else is on hold. I don't care if I'm performing CPR and I have to leave one of you guys gasping and suffocating. Are we clear? Hypothesis, the belly rule. Whoever has the belly makes the rules. First off, Katie told us, being pregnant is the weirdest thing that's ever going to happen to you. It's like growing a whole extra body part that doesn't seem to do anything except to bump into furniture and slowly get bigger so you can bump into even more furniture. I raised my hand, but aren't you excited? 
I was, she admitted, but then six months go by and you stop believing that it's ever going to happen. It's hard to maintain the fever pitch for almost a year. Her expression grew sad. And it's hard to think that when this baby is born, its dad won't be here to see it. When did he die? Came Noah's nasal voice. When did he die? Came Noah's nasal voice. Donovan brayed a laugh right into his face. He's not dead, wise guy. He's a tank commander in Afghanistan and he won't be home in time. Oz jumped in. You get used to Noah, he said quickly. He's not being insensitive, I assure you. Katie nodded. Another thing about being pregnant, your body, which used to be your own private business, is suddenly a hands-on theme park for total strangers. Everybody in a white coat pokes, prods, or examines you in some way or another. And for what they can't see, they have plenty of sophisticated machines that can look inside you. I brought a few of my sonogram pictures if anyone's interested in having a look. We all were. I think Katie was kind of surprised about that. She was used to Donovan and mm, let's face it, he was pretty different from the average gifted kid. None of us knew anything about pregnancy or sonograms, but it was natural for us to take everything seriously and to do our best with it. We wanted to know everything about, or we wanted to know about this because we wanted to know about everything. We were just knowers. I scoured the black and white images searching for anything that resembled a baby. I think I spotted a set of ribs and maybe a foot, but I also saw something that looked like a bust of Abraham Lincoln. And that definitely wasn't in there. Abigail thought she'd found the head, but Katie explained that it was just a bubble in the amniotic fluid. Latrell was convinced he saw twins. Kevin and JC saw nothing at all. Donovan wouldn't even try. I'll have plenty of time to look at it after it's born. It's going to be my niece or nephew, whatever. Noah stepped forward for a closer look. If it's a girl, he said finally, then what's that? And we could all see exactly what he was pointing at. Katie looked at both startled and forlorn at the same time. We didn't want to know the sex. We wanted it to be a surprise. Oh, he could be wrong, Oz managed without being without much conviction. The rest of us nodded in agreement, but we knew better. Noah was never wrong, unless he wanted to be. Better start knitting blue booties, Donovan told his sister. She looked daggers at her brother. Ooh, do you think she really looked daggers? Do you think knives flew out of her eyes? Figure your language. Oh, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. She looked daggers at her brother. Wipe that grin off your face, Donnie. I wouldn't even be in here. I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you. So everything ha that happens is your fault. Hypothesis. Brothers and sisters forge family bonds through a complex byplay of accusations and insults. It wasn't all business. Katie wanted to see the robot, so we gave her a little demonstration. And while Donovan was operating Tin Man, I ended up next to his sister. What's he like at home, I whispered. He's a barrel of laughs, she replied. He drinks orange juice out of the bottle, carpets his room in old socks, watches poker on TV, and has never said the word thank you in living memory. Should I go on? I felt my face, my face flushing as I stuck up for him. He's doing an amazing thing bringing you here for our class. She cast me a piercing look that instantly had me on defense. De on the defensive, what? Nothing really, she smiled at me. It's just, just interesting to see your brother through someone else's eyes. And suddenly, just as Tin Man was deploying the mini bot, she became very still and her expression far away. Are you okay? I whispered in concern. The baby's kicking. She took my hand and placed it on the sweater over her rounded abdomen. I could feel it tapping against my hand like a little, like little hiccups. It was strange, but also kind of beautiful. I was so much, I was so much more than just one hour closer to my human growth and development credit. In those 60 minutes, I've learned what a brand new human life felt like. Hypothesis. And a certain tank commander in Afghanistan will soon find out he's having a son. That's the end of chapter eight. Whoops, Noah totally let that cat out of the bag, didn't he? 
Chapter nine is called Unfailing, and it's from the perspective of Noah. Ooh, this is a new perspective. We haven't heard this perspective yet. I'm very interested. I wonder what it's like inside Noah's head. Tune in tomorrow to find out.